It's a feeling. It's a, a feeling of hostility. I find I've seen him, no doubt probably uh, Cain had enmity in his heart against his brother Abel. Because that worked on him and it caused him to kill his brother. The, what, the enmity is in us. Did, you, did God ever want you to do something in your flesh? Oh, I don't want to do that. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. you ever, you ever, did God ever want you to do something that your flesh don't want to do? Sure. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what we got to do. we got to overcome that. And I'm not talking about this flesh. I'm talking about the flesh, your mind. You know, this old flesh don't back to the dust. Some of us is old, some of us is young. Some of us is tall, some of us is short. But we're still, this old flesh is going back to the dust. But what we want is we want to put the mind of Christ on. And the only way we can put the mind of Christ on is we've got to get the will of the flesh out of the way. It's our desires, our, what, we, what we want to do. Just about everything that you, that you do, that God wants you to do, your flesh, I want to do. And it's and you say, well, how can I get rid of this? Well, that's where we come. That's where we got to pray, and we got to seek God. And when we find things that we're entertaining the flesh all the time, we start the spiritual life to death. Amen. I talked about this a little bit Sunday, but uh, you might look up the word enmity. What it is? How many believe we're two people? Sure. There's an outward man, inward man. And I know that the, the world uses this to teach about the rapture, but I want, I want to give you a little bit of a spiritual understanding about it. Now, I have to give you papers, the same thing I'm doing in the, in the PowerPoint, but I'm trying to keep from everybody having to look up all the scriptures and everything. But you've got your Bible study, what we don't get tonight, take it home with you, and you've got to study. There's a real study there. And this, this study goes through the whole Bible. This is the old man, the old flesh has got to die. It's sin in the Garden of Eden, and death come upon it, and, and we've got to shun it. I, I, I don't want to die. I want, I want to die out spiritually. I don't want to die naturally. But in Luke 17, 34 through 36, is everybody see it? Yeah. If you want to move around, you can. He said, I tell you that the night. That in that night there shall be two men in one bed, one shall be taken, and the other be left. I've heard people talk about all kinds of visions. They saw people being called up, and, and they get up in the morning, and a man and a woman, and one of them's gone, and the other one's I wonder where my wife's at. That's what they're teaching right now. But right here's two. Right here's two men. Right. When the Lord comes, my inward man's going to go be with him, but this man's going to be left behind. <laughs> Amen? Y'all see what I'm talking about? Yeah. <clears throat> Why would two men be in the bed together? I'm just trying to give you something to think about. I tell you that in that night there, there shall be two men in one bed, and one shall be taken, and the other one shall be left. 35 said two women shall be grinding together. One shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other left. And I really, this really opened up to me when, when Brother Jenkins was still living and he was preaching one night and he said, when, I, when the Lord comes, he said, he's going to take me, but this old man here is going to be left behind. This old body that I'm in is just going to be left behind. It's going to go back. He said, but God's going to take me out of it. And that's, just, that's, that's all we got to do. But we got to get ready to be taken out. Yeah. How many wants to get ready to go meet the Amen. Lord? Well, this old flesh is holding you back. The wants and the desires of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, that's what killed us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, that's what killed Eve in the Garden of Eden. That's what caused them, that's what caused the fall of man. And your flesh, whether you want to admit it or not, you've got enmity in your flesh. You've got that David said, I was born in sin, I was conceived in iniquity. We have all these things in our flesh. We've got a, a want to, a will. Some of us got different desires. That's why we need the Holy Ghost to show us what's right and what's wrong. Because if you don't have God, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't know what's right and what's wrong. Right. The Bible tells us, Brother Johnny's taught on this every time, about how sin is mystery. It's a mystery to us. We don't even know. It. But when God comes to us, He begins to reveal what the sin is. You know, there's been things since I, when I started out for the Lord, I didn't know that was wrong. 
that as I continue to walk and pray and read, God began to reveal the path to me. That's the reason He said He was the way. And, I, and I'll tell you what, I've been trying to stay in that way, but it, more and more, I'm trying to learn. All right. Went to Big Fall. Back here. I really can't do it anymore. Yeah, there you go. There I am. 2 Corinthians 5, 4. This verifies what I was talking about about the two men. He said, For we know that if our earthly house, in 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 4, we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle, we'll talk about this one right here, for it is all we have a building of God, a house made with, not, uh, and a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this, talk about this body, we grow and earnestly desire to be clothed with one with our houses which is from heaven. How many wants to be clothed with that heavenly house? That heavenly body. I want to have that heavenly nature. I want to put on Christ's nature. Alright? He said, and if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. You know the closer you get to God, the more your old flesh as you can see it. The more, the more your flesh is in it. I, mean, I know we've all can, can the Lord will want us to testify. And He's got bigger hearts out sometimes to get us to get up and testify. But what's holding us back? The devil? Yeah. No. What's holding us back? Ourselves. 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 Our fears. Our nature that we have. That's what's holding us back. It's not... It's not always the devil. The devil gets credit for a lot of things he don't do. There's things that you're war. You got a battle. We got a war going on inside of us. Good and evil is going on all the time. The world's talking about a battle of Armageddon, and they're about the church taking up bullets and guns and knives and going out and fighting against other nations. The only war is going to be in here. The war that's in your mind. We're trying to win. All right. I'm still. There. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, it's on your paper. It talks about the natural man and the spiritual man. Talk about within us. It's easy to look at things and hear things preached and talk about other churches. Talk about the people down the road. But look at yourself. That's what you need to worry about. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You got your eyes, I heard Don saying, if you got your eyes on somebody else and they're closer to God, you are. If they're standing between you and God, then they be. But the natural man, all about this man here, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You know, people look at you, you live a Christian life, they say, oh, you don't have to do that, that's foolish. You know, to the world, it is foolish. But to us, it's, got, it's the key to living for God. I'm trying to get where I'm going. <clears throat> right, now here we're going to get started. Talk about the enemy. Now this is, I'm going to read verse first. Verse 3 and 15. And this is when the Lord was speaking to the devil. And he said, I will put in that old feeling, that old hostile feeling. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed, talk about Satan's seed, and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head. Now up here I kind of put some words in it. The same thing. I, God, will put enmity between thy seed, evil, and her seed, which is Christ. Christ came through her lineage. Christ was the seed of righteousness. Everybody see what I'm saying? One more. Where was the seed at? When we talk about her seed, who was it talking about? The Word. The Word is the seed. He said, I'm going to put enmity between <coughs> devil. He said, between evil and between good. Between evil and good, I'm going to put that hostile feeling. You know what? Between, between right and wrong, there's no feeling here. 
always pulling you one way or the other. It's your old flesh. Your old flesh pulling one way, pulling the other way. <clears throat> I'm just trying to tell you now that the seed of the woman was the Word of God. That's in Luke 8 and verse 11. St. John 1 and 14 said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as the, all, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. <coughs> Alright? Her seed was the Word of God made flesh. Now, you see the prophecy that went forth back there in the third chapter? He said, I'm going to put the enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Well, what is the seed of the devil? What is the seed of the serpent? Sin. Sin. What? Sin. Sin. And what's righteousness? Christ. Who, in other words, Christ came down through that lineage. He was the one that was to come. And they said that the old that old Satan would bruise his heel, that he'd bruise his head. The Bible says that Jesus put the devil underneath his feet. And we, if Christ in us, we can overcome the devil too. We can put him under our feet. We can give his power to tread upon scorpions and upon the things of the earth. Everything, there's nothing greater than God. When God comes in your life, we can overcome all things. Has anybody, don't see what I'm talking about. Talk about the enmity. I started out, I talked about what enmity was. I said in the Garden of Prophecy in the Bible, the third chapter, and 15th verse, how the, the promise was that he's going to put enmity between thee and the woman, between her seed, thy devil's seed, and God's seed, and the woman's seed, which is Christ. Y'all see that? Y'all with me? All right? Now, we, we're not following the devil's seed no more. We know what he is, what his seed is. It's evil, it's sin. But following the woman's seed, we went down here in Luke 8, 11, remember, on the paper it says, that the, it's the Word of God. The seed was the Word of God. Now, right here it says, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That was the seed, the one that came. God came in the seed of man. Now, in Ephesians 2, 13 through 16, but now is Christ Jesus, who you sometimes were far off, made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one. Now listen what he's done. And hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, between man and God. Having abolished in his flesh the what? Everybody. The what? He abolished the enmity, even the law of commandments, containing ordinances, for to make in himself between one new man, so making peace. In other words, that old carnal nature that's always been there, and we've been preaching about it, it's a, it's a carnal mind, it's a carnal nature, it's a it's anything that's against God's nature, it stands in our way. And we can't, we can't, the Bible says, we're going to read it here as we go. But I'm just trying to give you something to look at. This, if you study this down, when God begins to reveal it to you, you see exactly. In other words, when when the Lord put us out of the Garden of Eden, he put a flaming sword at the east of Eden, and you can't get you couldn't get back in. In other words, you couldn't get back into fellowship with God. You couldn't get back in where God was at. But when that flaming sword came, which was Christ, He came and when it entered man and overcome that enmity, that old hostile nature, He overcome that, but then He gave man the right to become the sons of God. How many's glad for that feeling? Thank God that you love God and you want to follow Him. There's a nature about us that wants to follow the world. The devil wants you to follow the old beastly nature. But I want to follow the Christ-like nature. That's why we're called Christians. Because it says we're Christ-like. Thank God our nature is like His. We're putting on the nature of God. But that's what I'm trying to show you. In the beginning, this enmity, this hostile nature was put in the Garden of Eden. But it came down that it was prophesied that I'm going to deliver you. But the only way we could be delivered is Christ had to come down here in the flesh and he had to kill that nature that was in there. He had to take away that want to and that desire of the flesh because that's what's holding man back.
How many believe he took it away? How many believe he took that old nature away? And I heard the thought, I wrote this, I said, Christ broke down the middle wall of partition, or the enmity that was in the flesh, or the wall between man and God. In other words, there was a man. There was a wall between man and God. You know what? The more, the more time you spend with God, the more you can get that wall out of the way. Amen? Amen. What if you spend more time praying? Aren't you going to be more apt to be closer to God? Amen. Amen. If, if, if you're not doing all the things of the world, if you're out here entertaining your flesh and out here mixed up in all the things of the world, after a while you get the desire you won't want to pray, you won't want to read your Bible, you won't do everything what everybody else does. Fishing becomes more important. Hunting becomes more important. Riding motorcycles. Uh, making dresses. All kinds of things. Anything of fleshly nature, he can take us away from wanting to live for God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 14. There is therefore now no condemnation. How many knows what condemnation is? How many have ever felt condemnation? I feel it. When you do something wrong, you got that condemnation. You feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be wonderful to never have that condemnation? Never feel that guilt, that feeling? Well, now this is what the Scripture says. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the what? The flesh, but after the Spirit. That's the two natures right there that I'm talking about. There's a spiritual nature and there's a natural nature. This is what he said. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do is that it was weak through the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. You see that? See that on enmity? He came to destroy it. Verse 4 said, That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. A lot of folks believe that as long as they kept the law and done the law, they was righteous. But Jesus came and showed them it wasn't them. They're righteous and it was saving them. It was by having faith, by doing what was right. Verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the law. The flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. 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 <clears throat> but to be spiritually minded is what? Life, Life. and peace. Life and peace. I'm, I'm, I'll have this in this lesson, but I've talked about, I think I talked about it Sunday. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 or chapter 3, it taught Paul said, I'll feed you with milk and not with meat, for you wasn't able to bear it, because he said, Well, there was envy and strife, division. All them things are carnal. Them things is what hinder. We we can't have all that nature in there. Right. You know what? You can't have a bad attitude. You can't have a bad temper. All them things they, they tear down your temper. You know what? Even if my me and my wife, if we we quarrel and argue. Do you know that hinders our prayers? Yes. You ever read that in there? That old nature? Want to get the last word in? Oh, I've got to get the last word in. Even if you sit under your breath. But you know what? God should get the last word. He should get the last word. You see what I'm saying? This is what the, the born again is. I know we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues. But if it don't change our nature, then it, it's not going to do us no good. If we don't have to change mind and spirit and heart, then what, how can we ever please God? I'm tearing everything up here. Dude. Eh, I don't know too far. I'm real shaky. Okay. Verse 6, we're to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is what? What was put in the Garden of Eden between man and God? Enmity. 
Remember, the cause of carnal mind is enmity against God. It's a hostile feeling. It's a it's a it's a rebellious thing against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can can be. So they that are in the law flesh, read the rest up with me. You cannot please God. Now, am I in the flesh tonight? Yeah. You all see me? Mm -hmm. I'm in the flesh, ain't I? Mm -hmm. So that ain't going to stop anybody. Let's talk about it in your mind, in your heart. That's right. In the fleshly nature, being in that kind of nature. You see what I'm saying? If we're living in the old kind of nature, people smack my face, I smack them back. <laughs> I say what I think, I do what I want, I go where I want, I, I, and I'll have no judgment, I'll have no ruling. You know what a reprobate mind is? If somebody don't have no judgment, none what's right and wrong. Without Christ, we don't have no judgment. That's why we was lost. We saw our need when we saw what kind of shape we was in. It took God to come in our lives and give us a new life. He gives us a new path. How many glad for a new life? Amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Chris. I don't have all the light, but I'm putting it on every day. We can get into 13 chapter 1 Corinthians. We can talk about charity. All the things of charity, it brings us unto perfectness. Thank God. He said we... We know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is in part is done away, we need to put on perfection every day. Put on the things of Christ. But God, all right. Verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Right? Amen? Amen. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It takes the Spirit of Christ to change you. That's why people hold on to stuff and do things. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now any man that hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If we're living in righteousness, we're alive. If we're living in sin, we're dead. Amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. He does it. Therefore, brother. We are not debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We gotta live after the Spirit, not after the flesh. Anybody got any questions? Here's another place. Talking about enmity. The world, I'm going to read it first. He said in James 4, 4 and 4, he said, for, he said, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is what? Enmity with God. Whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is what? An enemy of God. You see the enmity? You can't be, you, no man can serve two masters. You can't live for God, live for the devil. If you try to be, you're going to be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. This is Romans 7, 18 through 25. And like I said, all I'm doing is I'm browsing this tonight. I'm, I'm trying to give you something to study. Paul's writing this to the Roman, to the Roman church. He said, For I know that, at, that in me, and I didn't put this parenthesis in, this is in the Bible. That is in my flesh. Talking about me, the old flesh. He said, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that 
which is good, I find not. You know, I want to I want to do what's right. I have the will, I want to do it, but I don't really know how to do it. Did you ever have something you wanted to give up? You wanted to quit? You're trying to separate from it, but you just got something there fighting and you don't know how to do it? You don't know what's in your way? Well, that's why we need we need God to show us what's there and how to get delivered. You know what? He's the only one that can get delivered. I told my son yesterday, I told him, I said, son, the only way you're ever going to get delivered from drugs is your life to turn your life over to God. Amen, son. Amen. I said, the only other answer. Amen. I said, it's death. It's a phone call away, son. And I sure don't want to get that phone call. I love, my, I love my son, I love my children, I love our neighbors and our community, but as long as they follow after the will of the flesh and do what that old flesh wants them to do, that's the kind of stuff it gets into. Mm -hmm. That's why women leave their husbands. It's because they got that old nature there. They, the old nature wants them to cheat. They want them to find something greener pasture. And vice versa, the men, they're never satisfied with what plan God gave them. They want to make a new plan. They want to go out and find something different. Can't you see how sin is destroying our nation? Can't you see how the lust of the flesh, the desires and the nature of our country, what kind of place it's brought us to? Thank God. You just think about it. Look at your own selves. Yeah, that's your own examples. I know where sin took me, what it brought me down to, but I never found life and peace until I found Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the only one that could pick me up from that. Yeah. But we got to put off our nature. We got to put off the things of the flesh. And we got to put off. Now, I can't chop my arm off. But the Bible said if your arm offends you, cut it off. So if your hand offends you. Now, I don't think the Lord's wanting you to cut your hand off. But He's trying to show you if something's wrong. The best thing to do is put it away from you. That's right. Put it away from you. Don't try to hold on to it. If you hold on to that thing, it'll just keep making you weaker and weaker and weaker. Amen. We're living under the grace dispensation. God is revealing sin to us, but we got to come out of it. we got to give it up. We can't keep holding on to it because if the Lord shows up and we're still holding on to it, we'll be left behind. Amen. That's why we've got to give it up. All right. For the good, and I'll tell you what, I've read this over and over maybe a hundred times because I get more out of it all the time. For the good that I would, the good that I would, I do not. In other words, what I would do, I don't do it. You ever read the scripture where it says, He that knoweth to do good, doeth it not, he ain't sin? We've got to do the things that's good. We've got to strive for that. We can't just, you know, let's say, Well, I sin a little bit every day. You know, God understands. Right. Or God knows my heart. Yeah, He does know your heart. But you're going to be accountable for something. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Only thing I use because I can use my own faults, like like a temper. Have you ever lost your temper? Yeah. 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 Oh boy. Do you ever get chastised for it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times we know because we get right back and do it again. And the Lord put me through a lot of trials when I first come to Him because I had a bad temper. And then the devil would tend me and do things to me, get up in my face, huff and puff, and cuss me out, all kinds of things. But what it was, the Lord was trying to let me realize, you've got to overcome that. Yes. That's why I'm letting it be there in front of you. You've got to overcome that. Because that's what takes you down. That's a weakness that I have. I, 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 get, I get upset. I get mad. I mean, I told this. I told the story. I worked in this place when I, when I was a young man. And, and uh, I had a sledgehammer. My job was beating these dents out of these big tote bins out of it. And, uh, and uh, that afternoon, this one boy, he just, he would, I was real prideful, and, and he got up in my face in front of everybody and just told me what he thought about me. And, and I didn't fight him back, or I didn't even say nothing. I turned around and walked away from him. And when I went back over there, I was working on them tote bins, and, and I, was just, I was just over beating on them tote bins, and I said, Now, God, you know that I that I obeyed you. And I didn't say nothing about you. You know I, I didn't I didn't try to hit him or nothing. God, you 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 know this. And God, you need to make him come back over here and apologize to me. Because you know I did the right thing. And I was just beating that old toad bin and the more I was talking to God, the more I harder I beat on to it. And it was just like I had this feeling just come over me, all over me. And this said shame on you. And I just felt so ashamed. You know what? I could have jumped there and I could have told that boy what I thought. 
But you know, around about a year or so later, that boy's dad was in the hospital. Guess who was there to visit him? I can be a witness to that boy because I overcome that old feeling that I had. And there's many, many things in our lives that we have to overcome. Feelings like maybe somebody get around somebody and you just don't like that. You just don't like them. There's just something there you don't like. But you know what? You got to pray. You got to pray over that stuff. We can't carry that stuff around. We can't have that carnal nature that we once had. Once I used to do. I used to cuss and, and steal and do all that stuff, brother. But I can't do that anymore. But you know what? My flesh. Can't do nothing unless my mind tells it to do it. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, they used to justify themselves. I don't know if I get this or not. They used to justify themselves. Even in the Bible days, they justified themselves. They thought, well, I've never committed adultery. I mean, I still, I'm still married in my life. I've never committed adultery. I'm a good person. They tried to justify themselves before Jesus. But Jesus said, let me tell you what. He said, if you look upon a woman to lust after Man. You've already committed adultery in your heart. Man. So what the Lord was showing, what's not it's not what's on the outside. You might do what's on the outside, but you gotta do what was from within. That's right. You ever read the scripture? He said it's not what goes in the mouth and defiles the man, but it's what cometh out of the heart. Thank God what comes out from our feelings, what comes out from our inside. Sometimes if you get mad and blow up, maybe there's something in there you need to check about. That's right. That's right. The psychiatrists, they try to find stuff and say, well, it's because your mom beat you up when you was little or because your dad did something to you. I don't know what caused it, but nevertheless, we got to overcome it. The only way we can is we've got to go through God. Amen. You know what? Even Jesus Himself, He said He suffered many things. He suffered in the flesh that He could overcome in the Spirit. He suffered for me and you. He showed me and you the only way you get it. He come here and did it. He didn't get mad. He didn't fight back. If anybody would ever had a reason to fight back, he did. He was righteous, but he didn't. They smote him. They spit up on him. They plucked out his beard, but he said he went to the land of the slaughter. He never opened up his mouth. When he hung him on the cross, with his blood running down on the ground, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. That's the kind of nature that we're looking for. That's what he found in Stephen when Stephen, they were stoned him to death. But he, he said, he said, God, don't lay this sin to their charge. That's the kind of nature we got to have. We got to pray for our enemies, thank God. People that abuse us and that's how we got to pray for them. We got to love them anyway. Don't sit and contemplate about things. Don't let the devil talk to you. You know, the devil's got all kinds of friends. One, one, will come, one, will come, one spirit will come and say, now you know Brother Buck don't like you. He he don't hardly listen to you when he preaches. But you know what? Maybe that night Brother Buck was feeling real bad. And he had his head down. Maybe he had a real bad headache. I mean, I, this is how things happen. Maybe he's got a real bad headache here. And I'm up here trying to teach, and Brother Buck's got his head down. And the old devil will say, He don't want to hear what you got to say. He don't care about you. And you know what? While I'm thinking about this. Brother Jeremy comes over and tells me, did you see Brother Buck sitting over with his head down? So I'm just using this example. This is how the devil works. He just keeps bringing things to you. And he'll get you to thinking things and pondering about things till it tears down your faith. Then you don't feel like praying. You don't feel like walking with God. It tears you down. That's your old fleshly nature. That's the carnal man that's got to die. We've got to kill that nature. The Lord's coming back after a people that don't have that nature. That's right. All right. Let me see here. Verse 24. If I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwell within me. Sometimes there's things inside of us. We don't know it's there. Listen. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now, I know a lot of times I've, I've said, you know, it's the devil doing that to me. It's the devil. But you know what? It ain't always the devil. It's, it's, it's this old flesh. Listen right. to what he said. Verse 22 he said, For I the law, I delight in the law of God after the what? In the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Do you remember in James when he was talking about the tongue being among our members? We got members, you know, there's members of our insides, our thoughts, our feelings, our senses, okay? But he said, he said, in other words, I'm wanting to follow after God after the inward man. 
But he said, I see another law in my members, talking about my flesh and my body and mind, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? This old body, this old body, who's going to deliver me from it? It's carnal. It's sinful. But we got to bring it under subjection. Brother Don, you've been going well, on the way 50 years, you're still bringing it under subjection, ain't you? Still bringing it under subjection. All right. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, this mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. We want to follow God, though. This is an explanation. This is what's on your paper. The law of God and the law of sin. The world, the flesh, the carnal mind is the enmity that was set between God and man. Christ came into the flesh to destroy the enmity or the works of the flesh. Now he is in us warring to destroy the enmity that is in us. How many believe he's in us? Working against everything that's evil. Bringing every thought into captivity. He's working in us. And I'll tell you what, he'll work a work that no man. Now this is Galatians chapter 5. Alright. Walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Ain't that what we've been talking about? Ain't that what I read in Romans? He said, there is there now for no condemnation to them that you can't walk after the flesh, you can't walk after the spirit. Now listen, verse 16, 5, 16 through 18. He said, this I say then, walk in the what? Spirit. Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the what? Lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Here's why. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. The works of the flesh. The flesh is a sinful element in human nature with its corrupt desires. It remains with the Christian after his conversion. And it's a deadly enemy to him. And those who practice the deeds of the flesh do not inherit the kingdom of God. Hence they must be resisted and put to death in a continual warfare that the believer wages through the Holy Ghost. We've got to war it off. We've got to fight against it. Enmity in the flesh or the works of the flesh. Now this is Galatians. Now this is what the works, this is the works of the flesh. Okay? The works of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are what? Manifest. What's manifest in? Made known. Made known. By God, by the word, by God preaching, by, by the Holy Ghost revealing. The works of the flesh are revealed. Here they are. Adultery. Now do you commit adultery with your flesh or with your mind? Either way. The well, you have to have both of them yeah. working together or they ain't going to work. It all has to come to your mind first. You got to come to your mind. You got to shovel it out. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, and I know the devil said, he told me, and he said, well, if you was really living for God, you wouldn't have thoughts like that in your mind. I've had some bad thoughts come to my mind. But you know what? I've realized in my life that it's been the devil that was putting them thoughts right. in my mind. Do you know what? The devil put thoughts in Jesus' mind. Mm -hmm. Sure. Did you ever read that? Yeah, he told him to command the stones to be made bread. Remember? Jesus just rebuked him. That will give an example that what we've got to do. When things come to our mind, we've got to resist it. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Barrenness. Emulations. Wrath, strife, 
seditions, heresies, all these things are in the, the flesh, working in the flesh. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and of such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All enemy must die by walking in the Spirit. Which fruit is? Here's, here's what the fruit of the Spirit is. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. 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 You know, if you really love your wife, you ain't going to cheat on her. You can't commit adultery on your wife if you really love her. You know what I'm trying to say? The works of the flesh, the works of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. You know, you have an apple tree. It's got leaves on it. It's got blooms on it. But what, what really counts? The apple. The apple. The fruit. That's like each one of us. We're trees. But we don't mean anything as a tree. But what really matters is if we bring forth fruit. He said, every branch in me that bringeth forth not fruit, he said, I'll purge it and it'll bring forth fruit. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long suffering. Long suffering, that means really being able to go through stuff and not fighting back the war and the world. How about gentleness? Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Listen, he said, against such there's no law. If you can do all these things, ain't nobody gonna find nothing wrong with you. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. How many believe Jesus was crucified on the cross? You really believe that? Well, we're doing the same thing. We're crucifying our flesh. We're giving up the world and the things that are in the world. We're crucifying our desires and our wants. We're crucifying them so that God can live in us. Now, I'm not going to go through all this. But these are definitions to all of those things. There are some scriptures in there. I'm going to give them to you. You can take them home. You can study. You can find out what stuff it is for yourself. What adultery is. What fornication is. What uncleanness is. There are scriptures to go along with. To go along with. I want you to know for yourself. I want you to see it for yourself. Welcome to our Bible study. If by chance you did not understand the lesson tonight, please feel free to contact your pastor. He has to give an account to God on your behalf. Hebrews 13 said. What I teach you, I've got to give an account for it. That's right. What I teach you, I teach my children, my family. And I'm not doing it to be seen. But I'll do it because I, I, want, I want people to grow in God. I, I'll tell you what, it's just like people just sitting in one place. But you've got to put away the old flesh. I just like I put the only question that is silly is what you don't ask. That's right. Do you see the two war? Do you see the two? And you can find this nature that we're talking about through the whole Bible. You can find that enmity between Cain and Abel. <clears throat> you all see what I'm talking about? Look what I brought. Do you remember uh, Ishmael and Isaac? You remember the one was of the bond woman, one was of the free woman? That, that old feeling was there. You come all the way down through the Bible and it was between, between nations, between kings, between peoples. And that, it always, that old enmity, it always destroys but love, it conquers all things. And we have to overcome, children. We got to we got to put off this old man. Anybody got any questions? Oh, quiet. Everybody just understood it. Come over and did it.